Hey team, how are we going? It's Kaz and Lauren from In The Trenches with Kaz and this is a call out, a tip of the hat to Western Australia for all of those that are on the other side of the country that have got more in common with the South Africa than what they have with those of the Eastern Coast. It's true. We've got some amazing news team and you've probably seen it. I'm probably the last one to the party, Lauren, and that is, and Lauren is from Western Australia, I am. And that is the 10th Light Horse Regiment is about to re-raise, or it has, as of the 13th, the 107th uh, anniversary. And now it's going to be available to those in Western Australia to create a presence. A fugazi, however, that they're going to be under the banner of cavalry instead of infantry, which is they what they always were. And how do I know that, Lauren? How do I know that? You were there. I was there because I'm holding the very shrapnel from Birashiva where one of their battle honours was. Yep. You know, the fact that I also opened the park of the Australian soldier at Birashiva, this is a fugazi. This is an infantry unit that has been taken like a inappropriate election <laughs> by cavalry who did never held sabres. They held the bayonet. And the plume that gave them the first rights to the prettiest girls in the taverns before there was medication to get rid of STDs. Yeah, before there was any doxycycline. Yep, that's right. You want to get rid of the clap, get rid of chlamydia, doxycycline. <laughs> Jonathan yeah. Weston. Hey, Kaz, first dream. Had my PFA date in a week, but got an email from medical giving me a class four um, unlistable for a kidney stone. But I thought the kidney stone, you just get rid of it. All you need to do is get new evidence from a doctor, piss it out like a bullet, and, uh, mate, you should be good to go, I hope. Yeah, he's working on, on the appeal now. Jack Boys is here. Survival hey, Jackie Man. Boys, how you going, mate? Survival Man 343 is here. 343, duty first. Yep, Jay, Jay Hayes, of course. Jack um, Boys, I'm currently doing an apprenticeship as a butcher. You never yeah. date a butcher's daughter. You go missing. You become a bit of sirloin before you know it. And Justin, Dromi, I hope when you say g'day peps, you don't mean g'day Pepsi. I think he means g'day peps. Sanaj for him is here. G'day, Sanaj. Um, you, you, because you're worth it. Yeah, because you're worth it. David Penson all the way from Nam. He's done multiple tours. Every time he crosses the border, goes back. He's yes. back in Nam. That guy is chilled to his feet by the Channel 7 chopper daily. <laughs> Time. I'm JP's here. The sniper. Yeah, Keegan Ronan. Keegan Ronan. Ronan Keegan. He is yep. the he is the grey mercenary from Japan. There you go. Um, Nicole King is here. King of Queens. King of Queens is here. And Daniel. we've got we've got Jay Hayes here. Guess what he's thrown me. Yep. <laughs> I already know. I don't want to give it away. <laughs> Tubes all the way from Western Australia, all the way from the Light Horse Origins. He sent me these. Now my tongue looks like it's had the capital punishment. It looks like a cricket pitch in Darwin. For those that don't know, tubes tear your tongue to pieces if you eat them correctly. And Tactical Nook knows that. Yep. And so does Daniel McClear. And so yep. does the Rural Hunter. Yep, Tactical Nick's in quarantine right now. That's Nook. Yep, Nook. Sorry, Tactical Nook. Um... Daz is here. Hi, Daz. Hey, Daz. I didn't get a chance to ring you because I was preparing this. Daz, yep. question for you. I know this is probably what it looks like in your backyard at the moment, you know, <laughs> with the single mums lining up for the cattle king. But this is a place called Megiddo, the Megiddo Plains, yep. which the final battle on earth between good and bad is meant to occur. Yep. Yes, I've been yep. there too. Yeah, amazing. The bullfrog is here. Read it been a while since he's seen the bullfrog. It has been a while since the bullfrog. He's got big cheeks <laughs> some strong legs. Good grief. Um, Moonhead, which is Nicole L, is here. What do you, what do you call Nicole L? It's, she's changed her name. It's Moonhead now. That's Nicole L. That's a big head. <laughs> it's, it's pretty big if it's the size of the moon. Um, Sage is here and he says, Hey, Kaz, going for my assessment day on the 21st. Infantry and armored vehicle crew. Yep. So far, the journey has been nothing but overthinking. 
that's that's what it's about, you know. And before we go overseas, guys, I'll tell you, it is the the silence before the storm. You know, there's a thing, and and, and I'll, I'll get back to you in a second there, team. Jesse, I wish I had your girl. There is a thing where uh, separation anxiety, when soldiers, male or female, before they go on operations, sometimes will start treating their family like shit. You know, and it's not out of anything deliberate. It's because it's time to get game on. Give me my pack. Give me my rifle. Let me get over and start the job, the gig, the deployment. You know, because yep. you need to be focused on what's going to happen ahead. You know, you can't be misdirected. Yep, exactly. Mm. Um, uh, Jesse Enderby, yep, you said hello to him, I think. Yep, Jesse, I want his girl. Yep, exactly. Rural Hunter is here. He is here. The Rural Hunter's yep. always here. And Jay, yep. I've got three packets left, mate. I know I'm going to get into one of those tonight. You know, treat yep, my tongue like the, like walking the plank. You should ration them. You never know when they're going to run out. I can't do it. I can't do it. Blue flame, baby. Red Bull. Let's um let's throw some things out to you so you understand about the light horsemen. And let me just say, guys and gals, I am no expert on the light horse or any other unit within the army because you only learn about your own. Yep. You're moving forward, you know, and the light horsemen are the folklore. The, the the legendary, the the elite, the the footsteps of the Anzacs, you always think of the emu plume that was given to outstanding riders by Harry Chevelle as a sign of attribute and competency in horse riding that you actually had to get yourself the emu plume bunk, out of the butthole, okay, of the oversized on steroids Steggles chicken. We call the emu, which is really just an ugly ostrich. So <laughs> yeah. they they started, okay, back in the Boer War. Okay, they actually did operations as, as a colonial soldiers in the Boer War. Okay, and they fought in asymmetric warfare, you know, and that's where Breaker Morant came from. There's uh, so many movies that are to do with the uh, colonial bushmen uh, to become yep. the uh, the actual uh, light horsemen. There's so many. Okay. What, okay, um, guys and gals, quiz. What movies were made, okay, the, about the Light Horseman? Not just the 10th um, uh, Light Horse, but okay. the 11th as well. Yep. There's well, at Stephen least three Webb movies. Stephen Webb said one earlier. Does that count? Okay, which, what did he say? Uh, I believe he said about Gallipoli. Gallipoli's one at the neck. Yep. Yep. Okay, there's another one. I've already mentioned it here, a movie they called after it. Yep, I'll let them them answer. Jack Boys wants to know if he should join the army if he's lanky. There's heaps of you guys who are lanky. They're normally snipers, Jack. Yeah, exactly. They're, and they're Jack was the name of one of our most famous snipers in World War One. Yep. When rifles had a range of like 100 metres, so he had to be goddamn close. JP knows that a little bit of it's about shooting, the rest of it's about getting the F out of town. Yep, yep, exactly. Do you know how you stop getting shot by a uh, a sniper? No. You put a porcelain cup just up on the parapet because I've watched the movies. They always shoot the cup first. <laughs> yeah. The movies are just real life, aren't they? They are to me. Okay, they've only got Gallipoli so far. What about the Light Horseman with the charge on Beerusheva? Yeah, come on, guys. And I think the other one is Below Hill six, uh, 61. Yeah, and they're all worth watching, I believe. Lauren, as I said to you before this came on, Sage, mm-hmm. you probably didn't know this. The first movie I ever saw at the movies, movie theatre, was in 1981, and it was at the opening when Gallipoli came out. And I was taken there by my Uncle Jim, yeah. who took me there with his two sons, who are my cousins, Mick and Darren, and we watched Gallipoli. You know, I was 10 years old, okay, in 1981. Okay, and that was the first movie I went and watched. You know, little did I know that I'd be opening the park of the Australian soldier of the of the in Israel, you know, a hundred uh, on the hundred year anniversary. It was actually on like the hundred first anniversary, uh, and then doing uh, uh, following the footsteps of them all the way through Romani. You know, I didn't get into Palestine, but I went through Jerusalem. Okay, I went through to Mount Scopia. You know, it's 
such a, a fantastic what was that Mount, last place you said? Mount Scopia, which is oh, yeah. one of the most expensive areas in all of Israel and is actually the Commonwealth War Graves, which okay. is at the highest point of a university. Yeah, and it's got a blood tree that's up there. And there was one uh, headstone that I used to love the most because this poor son of a bitch who got killed overseas, never to return home, following the great adventure, even then they dropped his headstone and broke it in half. Yeah. You go, mate, that guy was even unlucky in death. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to quickly put this on. This is a quick video that is just going to show you the announcement of the re-raising from uh, the uh, commander in chief, okay, of the of the Australian Army, uh, Mr. Burr, and he's going to tell you what's going on. Good afternoon. It's an honour to speak with you on what is a significant day for not for the regiment, but for all West Australians, West Australians and our, our army. army. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry I, can't I can't be with you in, you in person, person, but can, can I, I acknowledge, acknowledge all, all of you there, there in attendance at this significant occasion? occasion. I particularly acknowledge dignitaries from government, community and serving and former serving personnel, especially those from the 10th Life Force Regiment. I'm speaking to you from none other old country here in Canberra. I pay my respect to their elders and the elders of the Wadjuki people of the Noongar Nation, past, present and emerging. I also pay my respects to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander men and women who have contributed to the defence of Australia in times of peace and war, particularly those who have served as part of the Tenth Life Force. Today is an important day, as it marks not only the 107th birthday of the Tenth Life Force, but also the day that its regimental status is reinstated. West Australians feel a deep association with the Tenth Life Force, with many holding familial connections to the regiment's proud history. The scars, the scars of the regiment's engagement, engagement at the Battle, Battle of the Neck, Neck are seared into the collective memory of all West Australians. Australians. You are also justifiably proud of the regiment's pivotal role in the battles, battles to break the Gaza Beersheba line. line. Since, Since World, World War I, West Australians have continued to serve with honour in the 10th Life Force and have contributed to the defence of Australia. Of can I also say that the re-raising of the 10th Light Force's regimental status represents a strengthening of the Australian Army's presence in Western Australia. It provides more opportunities for West Australians to serve their nation in both a full-time and part-time capacity. I know you will seize this opportunity. Army is bolstering West Australian recruiting and training to support this approach. We have, we have begun, begun trials to allow soldiers, soldiers and officers recruited in her to conduct initial training in their home state. state. Many, Many of the course attendees are also BHP employees and have been introduced to these opportunities in Army through the Army BHP Strategic Partnership established in 2019. Reinforcing our presence in Western Australia will ensure that we are able to support the crisis response and security demands of Australia's relatively unpopulated northwestern and western borders. This posture will be further reinforced as Army grows the littoral manoeuvre and engineering capability that is resident in 13 Brigade. I finish by thanking all past and present members of the 10th Light Force who have proudly upheld the reputation of the regiment as a capable fighting force. I also, I also thank, thank the current, current members of the 10th Light Force, Force and its, its leadership, leadership for their dedication to the modernisation of the regiment. Your, your actions will ensure we are ready for the demands of a challenging future. future. Thank, thank you and good, good soldiering. soldiering. Okay, team. So there you go. There you go. That's, that's the presence. I believe the reason why this is occurring, in case you didn't know, is because we have a lack of eyes and ears in Western Australia. This is Reconnaissance Base Unit, just like the actual light force was designed to be a mounted manoeuvre reconnaissance force, which was the reason why they were on horseback, so they could outmanoeuvre other uh, uh, individuals that were on foot. Here's one for you that's quite interesting, but I, but I don't know if you've heard or thought of it this way, Dave D, or Dave Jensen, or Jay Hayes, or Daz. 
that is that the light horse had more in common with cavalry from 2,000 years ago than what they have with you right now. What do you mean by that, Pat? Thank you for asking. Okay, that is, they didn't have refrigerators for their food. They didn't have telephones back then. They had no internet back then. They weren't driving cars. Yes. Okay, team. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. I got. I thought I was back in Nam, but then remembered I've never been there. Dave has been. So basically, what I was saying is the uh, press like if you can, team. Um, that the soldiers of the uh, the light horse, which were infantry, never forget that they were never cavalry. Even if you're watching your cavalry, they were never cavalry. Uh, cavalry had sabers. You know, these guys had bayonets. They were infantry. Well, they had more in common with those t from 2,000 years ago than what they have with you right now, despite the fact that it was only 107 years ago. And if you're asking me what do I mean by that, what I'm letting you know is meat had to be salted. It wasn't refrigerated. There was no telephones. There was no car. Well, there was cars, but they were very rudimentary. As a matter of fact, the first cars were electric, and we're going back to electric uh, before petroleum. Um Everything only travelled at the speed of a horse. Other yep. than that, it was either by ship or by train. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys wrote letters. That was their communication. Every That's single person played sport. If you yeah. were fat, you were goddamn rich. Yeah, exactly. Because letters would sometimes take a year or so to get there. Yep, yep. It was a different time to be alive, and there was a lot of... Um, innuendo about you if you were not about mateship if you were not about the team if you were not about the country if you're not about nationalism you know everything was about put everyone else first and then do not be seen to be slacking yeah a, 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 an amazing to really think about what it was like back then and to know that the showgrounds you know where you went to watch the footy where you went to the fates all that sort of stuff where the ladies had done the Crochet, crocheting, crochet, crochet, knitting, you know, uh, socializing, dancing. That's where they turned up. So everyone got to see everyone say either yes or no to the recruiting staff to be part of the big adventure. It wasn't for the country. It wasn't for the crown. It was for the big adventure. It was for each other. And so that no one saw you and thought that you were a slacker, that you were uh, yellow that you were someone that deserved the white feathers that got put in some people's uh, mailboxes to indicate that you didn't have the pluck to follow out and go and represent the crown. Yep, that's right. Quite sad. Um, yeah, so 1914, October 1914, was when they basically raised them. Um, the motto is strike swiftly. And that came down to the fact that they were a... Um, Sorry, guys, I'll put this on and make sure. Background media, where are we? Uh, background media, we'll put this on loop so it keeps replaying. Um, yeah, so the motto was strike swiftly because they were a maneuver unit just like they are now. Okay, mounted infantry. All right, uh, their battle honours, and not, not all of them, were South Africa, Gallipoli. Gaza, Beersheba, Jerusalem, Megiddo Plains, uh, Damascus, where they uh, accepted the keys to the city, so to speak. They broke the back of the Ottoman Empire after more than a thousand years, getting revenge for Gallipoli at the Battle of Romani. And yep, I've been there too. It is amazing. They used the New Zealanders as part of the Anzacs. Harry Chevelle used them at a forward... Um, uh, Standing patrol, and then allowed over ten thousand of the uh, of the the Turks to be uh, to commit themselves to the attack, where they pulled back to where this massive sand dune is. If you ever actually go to uh, the Sinai Peninsula, the expectation is that you have to go and run up the hill of Romani, and when you do that, you get to see what it was like 
the exhaustion, the fatigue, the heat that that the uh, the Turks as well as the Anzacs went through. But what happened then was they didn't realize when they fully committed to this hill that has a deep trench before you go and commit yourself to it, that Harry Chevelle was behind there with light horse squadrons that then encircled, you know, enveloped the Turkish soldiers, nearly 11,000 of them. And for four days, they harangued them. They beat them down. They killed them with the sun at their backs, you know, and they either died from exhaustion through kinetic energy or gave up. But that broke the back of the Turkish Empire after more than a thousand years of power. Yep, sure did. It was pretty. I didn't even know where that was until you told me. And then I looked it up, and the Australian War Memorial has some pretty good resources on it, guys. So yeah, maybe go look into this all a bit more yourselves. And, and this is one of the things that people don't realise when you, when you join the Australian Army that we are considered the can-do nations, Australia and New yep. Zealand. Exactly. So when we go to places like Sinai it's expected that you don't pay for it. You will get sent to places like uh, the Gallipoli Peninsula. You will get sent to places like uh, in like Jerusalem, like uh, cultural tours, like Romani, like uh, the Western trenches of Beersheba. You know, all of these different things, you'll be thrust into history and you can't buy that. You could not pay for that tour. Because then you'd even be surrounded by people that may not understand the context or walk the footsteps of a soldier to know what they're looking at, what they're smelling and thinking, imagine that. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like You must have been able to get totally in, like immersed in the, in the history. It was crazy. And their alliances are with the, the king's royal hussars because yeah. that was before the queen. So that is their sister units. Yeah. Um, uh, Gallipoli, okay. Um, they weren't meant to fight at Gallipoli, yeah, but they wanted to get them blooded, basically. So what they did is they left the horses behind, okay, and they went to Gallipoli without their horses, okay, and never saw them again, most of them. Now, they lost more than 237 of the 10th, you know, and 479 were wounded. That is a significant amount. When, when you're talking about a couple of squadrons, Okay, from one regiment of the uh, of uh, um, the light horse regiment. Okay, the tenth light horse, the eleventh uh, light horse regiments, etc. Um, yeah, it was really tough, and you could make a love story just about the bond of these magnificent horsemen. Okay, and their horses, where only yeah. one horse came back. All of the rest broke the hearts of these men. That even when they survived, their horse that was an extension of them were either sold for meat to Arabs, okay, uh, the people that the Australians had a lot of disdain for, you know, or they were put down. And there was guys that were actually charged after taking their horse, saying they were going for a ride to say goodbye, and then shooting it themselves. And the saddest thing of all is when they actually went and put the horses down, it was okay if you were the horse number one, but then when they actually had people take away the horses to put them down, they had to walk them past their other dead horses so you knew what was going to happen. And at the time, there was Arabs down there cutting the skin and skinning the horses to use them for uh, other products. So they were just, they weren't buried, they weren't uh, looked after, they were getting cut up for meat, etc. And if that happened now, holy yeah. shit, because now the purple poppy is yeah. designated to the horses that fell to the work dogs that fall. If you see a purple poppy on Anzac Day or at the fantastic war memorial, okay, best war memorial in the world, I believe, and it's free, that's what the yep. purple poppy is for the animals. Yeah, yep, exactly, which were mostly horses, dogs, and pigeons. Yeah, but the pigeons, man, they, they taste like chicken, really. It, it's some pretty impressive stuff. When you look into it, it's actually quite amazing. Like there's one pigeon who is a hero. We've we've just got a how's this one, fellas? What? We've just got a text. I'm going to say his first name, not okay. his last name, because yeah. he's a dentist. Yeah. Jared has just marched out of Kapuka. He's just sent me a photo after uh, 80 long days in Charlie Company. I won't say his platoon, but he was in four section. They got best section, and here is a photo I'm looking at right now of him in his slouch hat. With I his, with, he looks fantastic. Oh, 
You know what? Bam. There he is. Can we get some thumbs up in the chat for Jared? This is a very, very inspirational time for this young man. Yeah, bless him. Mucho respecto to him. His career has started. 2022 is going to be massive. Oh, he looks lovely. What a fine young lad. Yeah, that's better than a fine young cannibal. Yeah, indeed. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people in the chat actually have relatives from the Light Horse Regiment. Um, th those guys that stole all the girls off the rest of the infantry of the time of the AIF. Yeah. Yeah. You can't compete with the plume. That the, the you know it just gets the girls. It does. It does. Do you know what else gets the girls? It's yeah. the old man's sash. When you yeah. wear the infantry sash that you should not be allowed to wear if you're a cadet, you should not be allowed to wear if you're an officer, you should not be allowed to wear if you're air force. The only people that should be permitted to wear that as an accoutrement is the infantry sergeant, which it was made for, which was originally a white sash that was used to put around the arms of the wounded in front ranks in Napoleonic times to drag them back through the ranks. And by the end of the battle, it was red with blood. So That's that so is what the red sash is about that you see. I love all, I love all the symbolism. I hope everyone here at this channel, and I think they probably do, appreciates that nothing is there by accident. No. Everything has a reason. And it was Let all earned. Everything. It was all earned. That's the, that's the amazing thing about yeah. it. And it's like a language. So the more you can learn about the symbolism, the better and um, deeper understanding you'll have of not only our military, but Australia. Yep, yep. You've got, the, you've got the best of the bravest that stepped up first, got seasick, went over, got in the yep. boats. You know, if you want to see something really beautiful, Lauren. Yeah, I do. You know, you go to a uh, surf life-saving club. Mm -hmm. Any surf life-saving club in, in, in Australia. You go to the Malula Bar, you'll get a goddamn lump in your throat as big as Elton John's dick. Pardon, Good grief. Pardon that. How do, how do you know how big it is? Tastes like chicken. <laughs> and basically what they have in all of those, because they go all the way back, well over 100 years, is the clubbies. That's what guys did. And they were the guys that ended up manning the oars as they went out, uh, to shore in Gallipoli. And in almost all of these surf life-saving clubs, they will still show the utmost respect on Anzac Day. And there was normally walls of honour okay, of those that fell from their surf club in 1915, you know, as part of the Gallipoli yep. campaign and onwards, it's yep. it, 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 you look at every primary school, there'll be yep. walls of honour of those that fell. Yep. Exactly, because we live in um, quite a rural area, there's a little um, town next to us, which we can walk to, and it has a soldier's memorial hall, and in there is a memorial wall of and all their names and some pictures. It's amazing. It's And when, when you look at it, God, you, you can get choked yeah, up. You know, no one tells you to be quiet at the Canberra War Memorial. You yeah. just know to do it. Yeah, exactly. You do. And it's it's amazing how everyone mostly is very respectful. Yeah. Yeah, they are. And I don't mind if kids are a little bit loud because I want kids to be controlled, yeah, I, but yeah. I want them to bring sound, yeah. laughter yeah, exactly. to, the, to the halls. So those, if they spiritually have the residue of them in there... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They can hear that Australia is thriving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what those red poppies were for. That's it. So you put the yeah. poppy, but you don't have to put the poppy on someone you know. No, exactly. You let the wall talk to you and you can feel it. Yeah, remember them all. We promised we'd remember and we have to do our bit in remembering them. And that means remembering a name like you always say, Kate. Yeah. You don't have to know them. You don't have to have a connection to them. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's more symbolic when someone yep. goes there and you realise that their life has changed in some way when you, things are put in context. If you took an American, okay, that don't realise that Australia's even been in conflicts, and you took them to the to the Campbell War Memorial, they would be shocked, absolutely gobsmacked, shocked to see the walls of honour with more than 100,000 men's uh, names up on those walls and the nurses that lost yeah. their lives, okay, yeah. who never asked for anything other than the privilege of wearing the uniform of the Australian soldier representing the country. 
Yeah, and, and not expecting to not come back. It's a beautiful thing, you know, and when you're a soldier and you go into the war memorial, okay, from Kapuka, which is an expectation, and then you realize that one day you could be on that wall. You don't know what the rest of the book is going to look like yet. It's true. Yeah. Do you know, here's one about Scotland. When okay. you when you go to Edinburgh and you go to the castle there, yeah, yeah. they have like a tomb inside the um, the cathedral there that have the books and all of the colours that have ever flown for that country in the history yeah. of Scotland. And every name of every person that has ever fallen, that had ever come out of someone's mouth, is written in these oh. books. Oh. Yeah. So your name goes down and you are in the same place where they bury the kings. <clears throat> oh. It's freaking beautiful. Mm. In Western Sense, did you hear about the Aussie Navy helicopter accident? I, yes. I did. I did hear about that. I haven't yeah. uh, heard any more because when mm. uh, Westy, when I saw that, I thought, how fitting that I've just put out the swim test video. Yeah, exactly, and that's why what it's about. And it's not about how well you can swim. I liked how you explained it. Yeah. I, I I don't want to see you swimming for the shore if you're yeah. in a, in a situation. You use enough energy to get outside the calamity and then you save the rest of that energy. You take your boots off, let them go to the bottom, tread water and wait for further direction. And, and if you've got any energy left, you call one of your mates in, get something that floats, normally the fattest person, and then you gather around them because the shark will go for them as well. John Sachnick's here from the West. He'll be appreciating this news. That's right. Oh, look, bloody Western Australians. They come out of the woodwork as soon as something happens. It's us sandgropers. We're, we're really proud. Bloody South Africans. Wait two seconds. Okay, this is for the light horse. Make the bubbles get off the side. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell everyone that you had an empty bottle of Pepsi in your house the other day. Yep. <laughs> hey, um, let us know the eldest. He'd have to be a parent. Yes. If, if you're a parent here, yeah. you know, because we want to get away from the left in everything we do, because the left normally means to me someone who's unhinged or selfish. Now, I've started having discussions with my little girl who's about to turn 10 years old. So that she actually understands that some word, some grammar that has been absolutely hijacked is not necessarily what it is. They're words like abnormal, you know, words like, um, uh, what was the other one? A loser. What is a loser? And, and we just analyze different words that they might hear. So she actually understands that normal conversation, especially by older people, is not an insult. Yeah. There's a different terminology. So many people, if you are under 25 years old now, you probably don't realise this push for social justice, etc. Is that it's less than 10 years old? It's true, and that doesn't mean that before then we didn't care about the state of society or people who were doing it tough. We just used to do actions instead of argue about words. Yep. I've only ever hit one girl in my life, and that was my sister. And I've been brought up that my job is to stay on the Titanic. I don't bitch and cry about it. That's just my lot in life. Mm -hmm. I love nothing better than helping a woman or a man who looks like they need some help. Yep. Although I bought breakfast for someone at McDonald's today in the mm -hmm. drive through who was in the car behind me, some tattooed freak who thought he was a tough guy who didn't even so much as put his hand up and say, thanks, mate. Oh, really? Stark contrast to the reaction you normally get. Normally, yeah, normally, normally it's pretty good, but this guy was just too tough for it. it was, <laughs> too mm -hmm. cool for school. Too cool for a free breakfast. I should have gone back and gone, give me a goddamn muffin. You, give it take to me. it anyway, though. <laughs> tough guys don't drink muffins anyway. Mm. Yeah, I have three a day. Mm. Uh, Dave, I'm having a uh, a Bundy. I can't do it, Nicole. The smell of it. You know, I've got a, a girl I really like in Bundy, but that's about it. Yeah, no, I'm not a big spirits drinker. I think as you get older, you have to be real careful how much you drink. Yeah, you do. It's, it will help you stack on the beef like nothing else. Well, 
did you know in Mexico they see it as one of the leading causes of death amongst uh, Mexico now is diabetes caused by Coca-Cola and watching the documentary they teach people that it is a medicine to give your energy back yeah right you know, it, it was crazy to watch yeah. and Nicole was 25 and considered the oldest in her uh, at, at, in her platoon holy shit Leo's here. Hi, Leo. Leo, he's been a wanker all his life. Yeah, and he will be forever. And a stunt man. Stunt man. <laughs> light, lighty, how you going, mate? Light foot, light horse. Hmm. Yep, manoeuvre. G'day, Kaz and team, says Leo. Good to have you here, mate. The Rusty Gypsy, he's here. Have you yep. seen the, the miniseries Anzacs? Of course. Anzac Girls. Oh, Anzac Girls? No, I haven't seen that. I've heard it's pretty good, though. I haven't heard that one at all. Yeah, no, I've heard it, I've heard I, I thought he was joking, I'm, like, I wear my medals on the left sort of thing. No, I actually believe it's uh, the opposite to that. It's not about virtue signaling. It's about, like, the ladies who did real stuff, I think. I, I could not even imagine the horror that yeah. must have happened when the boys went away for Gallipoli, mm-hmm. and then it felt like months, and then all of a sudden letters started coming back. Okay, sweet. But then... <laughs> The about p- the nurses. Is it about the nurses, Rusty? I'm not sure, but either way, yeah. the horror. Yeah. Oh, well, imagine being being there when whole districts, they don't do it anymore, where units had the people from the Western Australian, rifles, etc. The units were from locations. So then when there was a battle, like the Neck, like Romani, yeah. like Birashiva, all these yeah. things, what happened is it ended up with the priest, the telegrams, and the local cop and an army individual coming to your door and everyone knew when they were walking down the street, the bad news is here. So you would see on a paper, maybe some fake news saying that this battle had occurred and then it's hold your breath, wait. And then the sound of the footsteps as the notification squads that are still the same now. Yep. Come walking down the street and you goddamn hope they walk past your house. And then, and then how do you even go to the house two down when you know your son is alive and theirs is not? Or yeah. sons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. That's where that community comes in. Yep. Know. Yeah. It's, um, it's, must, it's just, you know, war isn't glamorous. No, Nobody it's not. Nobody says that at all. In fact, it takes it on the home front and on the fighting front, it takes every bit of gumption that a people as a collective nation has to come out of it okay. It does. If this is your first time here, team, make sure you uh, you subscribe. It costs nothing but attention. Indeed, and you get to chat in the great chat. It's a terrific chat community, so if you subscribe, jump in and say g'day because we love to say hello to you. Yep. yep. Everything's going fine. The... Uh, the stock market's doing well. That's good. It is. It is. One day, hopefully, I'm doing a house tour for four years. That'd be great. Yep. One day, I hope it does that well that I can get to pay an offside and to walk around with a goddamn camera. Wouldn't that be good? Where I get to walk and talk to ordinary people. You know what I can't wait for? What's that? Your van. The van. Sorry, yeah. team. I hadn't told you. For those loyal members of In the Trenches with Kaz with the 10th Legion, which is similar to the light 10th Light Horse, because they were mounted infantry as well. Um, the van has been postponed, not by me, by the company. Oh, okay. They told me that now the van will be here in February. So I'm oh. buying a van that's nearly two years old next year, brand okay. new, if that makes oh. sense. That's okay. okay. It's still going to be brand it's a few new. few months later. Yeah, that's not too bad. I thought you were going to say the year after. No. <laughs> no, so we're looking at March. Yeah. Looking at oh, March. That's okay. We can do that. And it is the most beautiful band. The only thing I don't like about it, it's a colour of a battalion that I always was in competition with. <laughs> and it's the colour of Pepsi. <laughs> Enough. It's about yeah. uh, the nurse that were, were put off on the island. Oh, that's uh, the, the only survivor there was, yeah. uh, that was World War Two, And no, uh, the only, su- sorry? Oh, he's just, it's a different one. Okay. What I thought they were talking about Miss Bullwinkle. 
the, the Gallipoli landing and they were told to form a hospital with nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I never heard of that. But it might, all right, I might watch it one day. There's there's a terrible one about Mrs. Bullwinkle that uh, in World War Two where they landed on the yeah. island and the Japanese come and uh, yeah 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 Yo, you know I can't even listen to Chariots of Fire without getting lump in my throat I I, I just can't I that was Lord Batten know. wasn't it okay was that Lord Batten Chariots of Fire the the runner yeah it's it's because they used it in Gallipoli <laughs> and also the um there's when the boys want to make me cry they just say what are your legs oh <laughs> there's there's no better scene there's no yeah. better scene i'm going to put that on tonight but what i didn't want to happen was the yellow strip that lauren got for the first oh. time last night yeah i hate that yellow strip yeah it made me it really made me ragey you, you look like it. You, you were stuck in some sort of uh, pose where you're like oh like you look like you're in a choir <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't know, there was proof last night that it's what you talk about. It might be. You know, because Lauren, as soon as she started talking about a spicy subject... It was a bit spicy. It turned, the yellow strip came up saying, interference, warning Will Robinson. Yeah, <laughs> danger, danger. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another Stephen. We've got Steve B here. Yeah, we've got Robbie too. Hey, Robbo. How you going, mate? Robert. Stevie B. G'day, buddy. How you going, mate? Are you from Western Australia, my friend? Why would you say that? Well, we're talking about Western Australia tonight. Oh, Western Australians sort of stick together. Yeah, it's true. Damn South Africans. We are quite patriotic. Um, okay, that's a, no, that's not a silly question at all there, Johnny Weston. Uh, he's saying a stupid question. Do current ADF members still wear dog tags? No. And I don't know why we don't. Because we are meant to. It's just they're a pain in the ass under body armour. They're a pain in the ass under your T-shirt, under your clothes. They've got sharp edges. Um, yep. Where's my dog tags? They're up here somewhere. You still get them. You do still yeah. get them. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I remember what it used to feel like if yeah. you cut it wrong on your cheek when you were cuddling into a gentleman's chest. Yeah. It used to be a thing there. Girls always wanted your dog tags. You know, and if and if they asked for them in the heat of passion, yeah, you probably would have given them away and then gone, uh oh. I've got a collection, but they weren't weren't collected in the heat of passion. <laughs> okay, I just like to make that clear. Some of them. She not, earned them. I would not want to tarnish anyone's reputation nor mine. Tarnish a dog tag. I, I actually have a very impressive collection of dog tags. Uh, Stevie B <laughs> is near Wagga. Wagga, that is such a beautiful location, even though it does come across as a racist slant. You know, Wagga Wagga. Oh, yeah. But it is so clean down there. It is so beautiful. Is it really? I've never been. Yeah, it's really good. Right then. That's somewhere else we should go. Okay. Throw some questions here, team. We've got about another uh, 16 minutes or so. Yeah. It's important that you uh, you feel like when you come here that you have a voice. Yeah, exactly. It's another reason to subscribe so you can jump in the chat and ask a question because who else does that? Who else with Kaz's background and expertise answers your questions for you? No one. What, a, what an awesome name. The main, the, main. the main one. Yeah. Not like Lion Main. No, exactly. The main one. Hi, the main one. G'day, buddy. Great to have you here. What's your question? Let me know. Yeah, you're right, Jay. It is great to see some new names. In it the is. Chat. We get sick of looking at each other. Davy Penson, here comes a yellow strip. No, no mate. Don't say it, Davy. How's how's Vietnam going at the moment, Dave? Yeah. Do you ever go around? You know, it, it, it's weird how we go to Asian countries and teach them how to speak English, but we don't show them how to use a fork and a knife instead of chopsticks. <laughs> Maybe the chopsticks is the evolution. Maybe that's the. Have you ever seen them eat? Their face is like two centimetres from the hot soup. It's an oh and issue. <laughs> Guys and gals, I'm going to put out a video in the next uh, two days that you should be really excited. Like, I'm talking about, like, excited about. I'm going to give you ten reasons never to watch my channel again. Because <laughs> I'm going to put, make a video of the top best channels on YouTube oh, good one. that yeah, you good can one. go... Holy shit, I've been wasting time on Kaz's in the trenches with Kaz. One of them too, so yeah, we should do it. It's Look, 
all, all you need to do is grab one of their videos from one of their biggest playlists and take 30 seconds from each one and go, this is the, the this is it, and this is why. Number yeah. two, this is what it is, and this is why. And and I won't give you a channel that doesn't give you the ability to look backwards as well as wait for what comes next. So you do not have enough time in your life. So you're almost wishing you were in some sort of industrial accident that gave you time to actually watch it. <laughs> okay, JP has asked a good question. Will the tent have horses even if it's ceremonial? Yes. Great. Th that's, uh, that's an excellent question there, JP. Because what they also do, uh, it's an, they're Army Reserve team. They are Army Reserve, but there will be a regular component and it might allow for soldiers that were brought up in Western Australia, enlisted in Western Australia, to get posted back to Western Australia to take up certain roles as card, uh, carter staff, etc., um, but they also have ceremonial roles where if you can ride a horse to a certain level as well, there is a yep. ceremonial expectation like pipes and drums in the Royal Australian Regiment yep. where you will get to have your horse. Um, I don't know who pays for it or whether that's all uh, 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 incidentals, etc. Yep. But they, they will go to certain events. They'll ride in parades. You know, they went over to uh, Israel while I was there. That's great. Yeah, because JP's a horsey kind of guy. He loves horses. So do I. Yeah. ADF Ram is here. Hey, ADF Ram. How you doing, mate? That's a battering ram right there. Yeah, it's been a while. It has been a while, but that's the biggest compliment you can give is when you've been away and then you come back. Because then it's saying that with your actions, you came back. You know, it was yeah. worth it was worth coming back to the channel. We love having you here. And all we ask is people yeah. subscribe and it doesn't hurt you to change your name to something that is not your actual name and it's ask a question idea. that challenges us to give you an adult's answer yep. and be able to say, I'm glad you could say it because I didn't want to say it out loud. You can put me in the hot seat. Hey, we don't know. Yeah, put me in the hot seat. All good. We're interested in learning too. Um, I saw that too, Steve B. He said, I saw the army testing e-bikes. Looks cool, very quiet and fast. You know, the irony behind that, Japan's success through the Philippines and through the Pacific Islands was because they used bicycles. Something really? so simple, something so silent. Yep. You know, I don't know how these bikes are going to work. It's not going to be as easy as they think because there is the yep. range anxiety of, of, of them running out of battery. Then what do you do with it? Yeah, it's true. That's you true. Know? They're good for occasional zipping here and there. For yeah. Them. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Daniel McAleer has a question. Is during downtime as infantry on base, is there facilities to train in different martial arts such as jiu-jitsu? There, there is facilities, but you're also allowed to ask permission to be able to conduct certain sports, pastimes, activities, triathlons, martial arts, boxing, um, all of these different things in clubs, MMA gyms, etc., especially in Townsville. But you do have to ask permission because if you get injured there and it's outside, pardon me, the parameters of something you've asked permission for that prevents you from being able to do your job, that can go pear-shaped. Uh, but normally, no matter what happens is we'll take your carcass and then we'll drag it into an army gym and drop you on the ground and go, he just hurt himself on the bench press. <laughs> yeah. so um, turkey fish is here. You got your ass kicked by the Anzacs. Yeah, it's saying this is. Come on, it's the first time I've actually managed to catch a stream live. It's been very interesting. Welcome, turkey fish. Great to have you here. Gobble gobble. Yeah, is is there a question, mate, that you would like to hear answered? Yeah, give us a go. And where did turkey fish come from? That's that's a different name. It is, because it's actually turkey fish. <laughs> Welcome, turkey. Can we get some thumbs up for Gobble Gobble, please? Yeah, indeed. Welcome. Darcy, that's a good name. Yeah, Darcy Turban. Makes me think of young Keely's boy. Yep. Uh, do you need an ATAR? ATAR. To go to it, RMC Duntroon? I am sure that the 
uh, chat can answer that because ATARs yeah. didn't exist when Lauren and I were going to school. Yeah. Um, it was 30 years ago I joined the military team. Um, yeah. And I don't know if I passed or not. <laughs> I think yeah. they might have just needed some people. Uh, Reese. Yeah. Second 14th uh, testing the e-bikes. Wonder, yeah. You know what, but there is no tough way of riding an e-bike. You look no, like a dick. Right. It, it does look like fun, though. The little video was good. Well, how bad do you reckon the light horse teased the camel soldiers, the camel corps? <laughs> You'd be going, what the hell? You get spat on by what you ride. <laughs> there you go, turkey fish. A whole bunch of thumbs there. Watch out for uh, Ivan Malat. He might be under your bed now. It's like calling Candyman three times. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I still think I was. ADS Ram said, yeah, I've been trying to get my brain back into the defence focus after the medical rejection. I've got to keep fighting the appeal. That's And a lot of people are successful. But yep. you always have a plan B. Yeah, you do. You know, because it's not a given that you'll get in. It's not just that you've made the decision for the military. It's does the military need you and is it going to harm you? And can it afford you? Because yeah, if someone gets in and they carry an injury... It's going to cost an awful It could cost millions. ...the taxpayer when you add it all up. If they cost a fortune... If they shouldn't have been in in the first place, and then you get in, and then you get hurt, and then you become like a—it's awful, but a burden on the taxpayer. Yeah, and it can be. A, and you've only got to add ten of those, and yeah, then, exactly. and it starts to really build up. So the turkey fish is saying it is an actual kind of fish. Oh, is it really? You know that's got to be in the next thumbnail. There has yeah. to be probably a turkey fish. Red man. Where's hey, Kaz, fish? where's all the tubes? There's some of them, mate, and I tell you, I haven't seen them outside the box that I bought, that I got by luck. They were like a box of shrapnel that I just so happened to get that had fallen basically off a truck. And then Jay Hayes, okay, came, Rural Hunter got me some as well. You know? It's, Darcy would like to know what's the benefits of joining your Patreon. Uh, basically what it is, the Patreon is, it's, don't think of it as a Facebook site. Do not think of it as Instagram. No. It's all about this. If you need mentoring, if you want one-on-one -on -one counseling, the absolute truth based off someone that was in the military for 24 years, who was there to guide you, um, and speak to you candidly one-on-one -on -one about your actual, uh, position, the mentoring, the inspiration, instead of just desperation, I'm there to create a blueprint or to even just make you feel a little bit better about your decisions, clear up any doubtful points that you may have and be able to make you feel like you are not alone in the absence of support of a team of those around you, whether they be family or friends that may not believe in you, know the man that you can be. You know why? Because he was a skater boy. He said, see you later, boy. It's a good song. Avril Lavigne. The words yeah. in that are, e are excellent. I was 58 kilos when I joined the army. Wow, I was really? bullied at school. You know, I lived in fear as the smallest guy. I was from a surf town where some of the guys that I hung around with actually murdered a girl. Gosh. It was rough as hell, you know. And I joined the army at 58 kilos and I was so nervous that all I did was train. I never looked on how to train. I, I ran, I swam, you know. I did push-ups, I did chin-ups. I did dips and then I ran again. And then I just said, all I can do is get in line and whatever happens, happens. And the rest is a song. <laughs> Not so much. Could be. <laughs> How to get your first posting by doing a really great job at your initial employment training school or going for one that no one else wants. Adelaide, that'd be a key. Does my skin make me look like I've been bitten by a vampire? <laughs> Not so much. I've been fighting with my lighting for a long time. You don't look half as pale as I usually do. Yeah, but you've got a ring light now. I do now. Which doesn't mean that, you know, got a pants off been eating chilli. You, you know? actually made Elton John joke about that too when I first told you. <laughs> Darcy, bring your sense of humour too, mate, because what we need to do is make that an enjoyable thing for you. You come onto Patreon... And yep. I tell you, you'll end up saying to me, Kaz, honestly, I've got to go. 
I've just yeah. just let me go. Right. It's, it's really worth it just for the access to the bat phone. I talk to parent. I talk to parents of yeah, people. You know. Invaluable. Yep. Um, Cameron Parsons. That sounds a good name. Parsons knows. Yeah. Love your work, uh, Kaz. Waiting for my citizenship. Welcome yeah. to Australia, friend. Yeah, welcome. To go through then, and I will be applying for the RAF. Okay, your videos have been a great help. Cameron, where are you from, mate? Yeah, we're, we're really interested. What a success story when you see yeah. someone that comes from another country, yeah. joins the military, and yeah. starts a legacy from scratch. That That is, you know, that's how to do it. And that's what yeah. I'd do if I went to another country, yeah. if I was a young man. I'd join their yeah. military, and then four years later, when someone goes, oh, you're from whatever, you go... But I served yeah. in the, I served in your exactly. army, mate. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, you're not the first one here who has gone for citizenship and joined. So we'd love to hear your story. And that's how you became a Roman citizen. Was to enlist yep. for 24 years. Yeah, to give back. From the UK, lovely. Fush and chops, fush and chops. <laughs> that's New Zealand, isn't it? Aren't you doing a Kiwi accent? Yeah. Because <laughs> if he's from the UK, it'd be a chip booty. Or it's not the way you make pottage. That's <laughs> not the way you make pottage. It's great to have you here. Can we please get some thumbs up for the, for Cameron Parsons? Yeah. It's good to have you here, mate. We know that the UK have a lovely uh, sense of humour as well. You know, come over, become a colonial. What I need you to do, Cameron, to make it legit, I really need you to get caught shoplifting, mate. Well, if he's going to come to Australia and become a citizen, you've got to come from the halls of convicts. Yeah, don't do it, Cameron. <laughs> Oliver, please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> hey, Kaz, bring watching for last week or so. Great to have you here, Ollie. Yeah, welcome. Have you got a question? Do you have a question? And while you're thinking about that, do you know Oliver would have been the name that I would have called my son yeah. if I hadn't have had a daughter? Favourite name. It's a great yeah. name. Yeah, either that or Julius. Yeah. Just as we had a girl, man. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Dave is in the... Uh, you've got a lot of people here in, in the 10th Legion too, uh, for those that come over to Patreon. Yep. Yep. Then I'll put another link in. I did put one before, but just in case you're looking for it. Mm -hmm. Turkey fish. I've, I've got to know what it looks like. Yeah, we'll, we'll look it up later. James. He's got the... Uh, he's got the poo-coloured hand right there. Good to see there's no threes. Where's uh where's Carl P? Oh he's Carl's he, he, at a barbecue. His parents have come down. Yep. Guys and gals, can I give you a quick tip? We we've got a beautiful history, Australia has. Okay. We do. Like every other country, it ain't perfect. We get that. We do not blame the sins of the father on the son. We definitely yes. don't blame the sins of the great grandfather on the grandson. And I That's mean true. granddaughter as well. Yeah. Um, I feel like at the moment the entire Western world world is going through a a, a time of chaos. But that yeah. is no different to when electricity began, when cars took over horses, when trains started to be the uh, less desired transport. Technology is moving at a straight up level, green candle for those of the stock market, where it will not be long before we'll get the memo, where we'll understand that technologically we are the luckiest generation in the history of the world that was not royal. Yeah, indeed. You are safe. Yeah. Okay, you are healthy. Yeah, I just okay. had a look. But we have um, the least amount of people that ever sit around the dinner table together, which is sad because we are a herd animal. It's important yeah. to nurture friendships. Keep them going. Be the person that writes the list of names. Rotate through them. Okay, so you call them often and they know that you exist and you know that you value their friendship. And the other one, what I need you to do is you need to check out the Evo Grill. <sighs> That's random. The Evo yeah. Grill, you know... Like Top Gun took my breath away when I when I saw it. 
It is a 31 inch round uh, cast iron uh, grill, which is uh, which has a drip tray that goes all around it. It costs about six grand. I have to get one when the stock market says, Kaz, you made the right decision on me. It is amazing. Now, if you're a cooking man, you got to look it up. The Evo Grill. Evo Grill. Yeah. Hey, Ivan's here. Ivan, uh, my favourite Russian. Yeah, I was just, I just looked up turkey fish. This is what it looks like. As if a lionfish and Nemo had a baby. Oh, well, I'm still here looking at Jaden. Those who don't know, Ben, Jaden marched out of Kapuka today. Oh, that's so great. I've got to get out of here. Okay. I'm so proud. Hey, I've got to get out of here because I've got to get ready for my stream in half hour. Okay. We're going to be out of here in uh, five minutes as well. Uh, okay. Lauren's going to continue on. She's having a stream. Yep, I will. Yeah, it's my birthday tomorrow, Dave. Well, I can stay for five minutes. Sure. You can. Okay, on behalf of everyone here, before we get to your stream, to make it official, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lauren, because you're worth it. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Hip hip, hooray. Hip hip, hooray. Hip hip, hooray. Birthday punches from every subscriber in exactly the same spot on the arm. You know. And thank, thank you for you. everything you do for us on our channel. Can we get some oh, thumbs up for uh, for lovely Lauren, the voice of the channel? Thank you. Yeah, mm. it's my pleasure. No, it's always my pleasure to help. Um, I don't feel like I'm helping. I'm just here having fun. Dave D's wedding anniversary today, and it was Daz's birthday yesterday. It was Daz's birthday yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, guys. D Daz had a beautiful roadkill cake. <laughs> He Dad had a he had a he had a meat cake. Yeah, Dad would have loved that. <laughs> Dave D, Lauren, is it? Uh, no, it's a birthday tomorrow, bro. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, Ross. Anyone else uh, listening? Uh, listening from the Ibis in Mascot. Yeah, Ross, you're there on. Uh, yeah, Ross, the kebab man. He's at. Yep. Uh, he's there getting ready to go. And Milan is his little boy. You know. Oh. You know. Mate, you've got to get through in the shortest amount of time. You can't cheat at Kapuka. You can't get upclassed. But, mate, all the best. You know? Yep. And we've got photos right here, Yaros, of people that have marched out today. Yeah. Pardon me. That's going to be you soon. Yeah, that's so great. I can't believe they've got to wear face masks when they've been rolling all over each other, doing contact PT, yeah. and then all of a sudden, sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. I don't. Yeah. I, I can't keep up. I really can't. It looks kind of nice, though. You know, it does. Nice. It looks smart, especially to British that don't brush their teeth. Hey, thanks, Sorry. David. He just said happy birthday to me in Vietnamese. I thought you didn't know it. Happy birthday, he says uh, James. Thanks. We've got a good group here, team. We really do. And in the absence of this, guys, you know, what other channel can you go to where they're not speaking fake news? Where there's an agenda, where there's sponsors all over it, yep. you know that's yep. why we have things like Patreon or like the memberships and stuff like that is so that we can do things, bigger projects, etc. We've been tied down for two years, just like you guys have, but uh, when the van comes, whoo, Van Halen, here we come, guys and yep. gals. This has been a terrific uh, stream. Uh, I'd like to put some thumbs up and say welcome back to the 10th Light Horse Regiment. You know, for all of those in Western Australia, if you're in jail, break out, sign up, be part of something awesome. Be You can't really get on Instagram with your emu plume on your slouch chat, even though we know really you're infantry. Um, but I'm really stoked to see this. We're proud of the lads. And uh, for guys and gals that were here tonight, fantastic to have you here. Get your messages ready. I'm going to give you the video for the top 10 uh, channels of YouTube. I will not include mine. And that'll be coming out in the next two days. So get wet. Get very wet. Get excited. Get some tubes. Get a goddamn haircut, you hippie bastards. And I look forward to seeing you on the flip side of the coin, which is almost out of circulation. Lauren's about to go on, team. For those that can... Do her a favor for a birthday. Go on to Lauren is shining. Can you put your uh, 
Can you link up now, please? Sure. I'll get it. If you can give Lauren any present whatsoever, if you're watching live right now, Aorta, or whether you're watching a rerun, go to Lauren is Shining, subscribe to that channel, get her off yeah. her P-plates, and let's look plate. after some Aussie uh, YouTubers. Because I tell you what, the next time you might have something that you need us to represent you as a platform and hold your passion up high for all to see. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Cass. Thanks for telling us about the light horse as well. It's very important. Those bastards were taking the girls off normal infantry soldiers for a long time. Yeah. What are your legs? Yeah. Steel springs. Oh. What are they going to do? They're going to hurl me down the track. You're going to make me cry. It's such a beautiful thing. You need to go and watch Gallipoli team. I tell you I what, do. you know, if you weren't proud to be an Australian, you would be. You know, you don't need to say to a soldier, thanks for your service. What you do need to do is get up on Anzac Day and stand there quietly beside the shrines and listen to the ode of the fallen because we need to remember those that fell that didn't go to hurt they went to represent yeah. with that out the way happy birthday helen and lauren <laughs> and daz <laughs> see you later mucho respect and i appreciate you more than you could ever understand no. because i still call australia home girt by sea have a bath learn to swim if you're new to Australia, steal something. Become a convict like the rest of us. You are, we are, we are Australian. Now give me back my goddamn wallet.